Welcome to the Opus Projector Tool Training. In this video I want to show you just some little tips and tricks, hints and maybe some shortcuts and things that a lot of you might already know, but some of you might not know some of them. So I'm hoping that at least almost everyone will get something out of this video. The first thing I already mentioned in the tour video let me open the touch page here. And this is regarding the modification of many objects in JavaScript. As you know, to modify properties of objects in JavaScript, you need the ID. That's the number behind the object name. So for example, these for all these buttons. For example, when I want to have a clear functionality for these buttons. So when you push the buttons, they turn green. And when you press clear, all the green backgrounds go away again. The script behind the button needs to go through all these buttons and remove the green background. In the past, quite often, I would sit down and type all of these numbers one by one by myself. And as you can imagine, Engine. And as you probably know, at some point there will be an error, at some point out there will be a typo, and um, hard to fix, takes a lot of time, and so on. Now I can just select all these objects in the project tree, right click, and say create JavaScript ID array. And what that gives me, if we open up the original script that I'm using in the, in the welcome project, what that gives us is this, a variable called my array. Of course, I can change that. And here I have all the IDs from the objects that I selected. So in this case, the IDs of all the buttons on this page. None miss, none with a typo, nothing wrong, no doubles. Just a very little thing, but probably very helpful for some of you. The next thing, and this is really basic, it's about moving objects on the screen. Let me zoom in on that button here. You probably know that you can move objects with the cursor keys. I will switch to the properties. So you can see when I move the object with my cursor keys left and right, that the X location changes by one. And you can use modifier keys to change the width in which the object will move. So for example, I press the control key and it will go in steps of 10. I press the alt key and it will go in steps of five. I press alt and shift, this will be 50. And I press control and shift and that will be 100. Also, quite often you might have to sort or order some objects in a line, let's say. So for example, all these buttons they should have the same size, of course, so it looks good, and they should have the same X location. The Y location, of course not, but the X location should be the same. You can do this manually, you can enter, you can use this one as reference, and you can copy it and uh, put it here, or you just enter the number, no problem at all, but you can do it a little bit faster. Let's say this one is your reference, and it looks it's, it's in the correct horizontal position, and you select this one, then you press Ctrl and select the others that you want to sort, and you press this button, Align Middle. This means that all these objects will be center aligned horizontally using the first one as the reference. Let me destroy this a little bit here. I was very clumsy and the buttons are a little bit misplaced. Oh my. I select with this one first and I press this button and boom, they have the same horizontal position. You can also do the same thing vertically. So for example, you can align these three buttons. Let me push them out of order and I align center and they will be in a straight line. There's also a line left and right. This only makes sense if you have objects that don't have the same width or height depending on where you, how you want to sort or align. So I'm aligning left, I'm aligning center and I'm aligning right. Also a very good possibility to sort and align your objects in the way that it looks good. The next little trick I want to show you, once you have found your ideal alignment, let's say these four buttons, they are absolutely perfect now, what you can do is you can lock these objects. This means that the position and the size of these objects is locked. So you cannot accidentally move them with your mouse. Happened to me in earlier days, definitely. I'm sure it happened to some of you. With this, it cannot happen anymore. They are absolutely fixed. What you can also do, especially if you have layered projects, which, which means you have a lot of objects on top of each other, 
You can see that a little bit. So some projects from customers, they look a little bit like this. A lot of objects on top of each other and they are switched with visibility, of course. So it won't look like that on the device. But in the projector, it can look quite messy. What you always can do, you can hide objects. So now I only have this one, I can hide that one, and now I can take care about this one. And if I click on show, the others will be there again. So I can move all objects out of the way that I don't want to work on at the moment and work on the one that are behind those objects. Very important, this is not a change in the project. I did, of course, some changes, so let me save the project quickly. Now I press show and show and show and now i'm hiding this and this and as you can see the save symbol is not enabled again which means there was no change to the project this is just a temporary setting in the current project session this will not be saved if i close this project and open it again all objects will be visible again so this is just a temporary thing to help you get to objects in the back Okay, what else? Something that I did enable in the welcome project, you might have realized it, is when you use the encoder to navigate pages, the encoder does not have an end. Maybe I will just quickly show it in the simulation. I'm simulating here, of course, so I will use the mouse wheel as the encoder. And as you can see, I'm scrolling through the menu items here, and now I'm at the last one. But when I scroll further, I go back, I roll over to the first one. I can go the other way too. From the first object, the help button, I can go back to the last one, to the back button, and then all the way around and around and around again. So I can scroll forever, and it will always roll over from the last object to the first one, and vice versa, depending on the rotation direction that I'm using. This rolling over in the navigation, it's a property of the frame. And it's a property that is not displayed in this list here. So you need to go to JavaScript for the welcome project. I can tell you and show you. I have a specific script called rollover. Whenever I create a new page, I take the ID of the frame, the main frame in that page, and I add another line here and just enter the ID of the frame. There is another use case for this property, and that is for numeric fields. If you edit numbers with the encoder, you will probably have seen that when you scroll to the absolute maximum value, it will just stop. If you scroll further clockwise, the value will stay at the absolute maximum value because it is not allowed to go higher and vice versa on the other side. When you activate rollover for a numeric field, what happens when you go to the highest value of a numeric field and you scroll further, you roll over to the smallest value. So let's say you have a numeric field to set the real-time clock minutes from 0 to 59. When you scroll one higher than 59, what happens is it will go back to 0. So this might also, depending on... Uh, what you want to set, of course, with something like a pressure or an RPM that you can set, you probably don't want that. But for something like setting the clock, it might be intuitive if you can just scroll in one direction and I'm already at 59. I just scroll a little bit more and I'm back to the low values. Speaking of properties, there is another property that cannot be seen in this property list, but it's a very helpful one. And that is flashing. Let me open up the help. For this, I go to JavaScript, custom JavaScript functions, and if you've worked with the projector tool and the manual for a while, you know that the list of all object properties that can be changed can be found in the get property description. Here we will go to flashing. So there are two properties here, flashing and flashing cycle. I've seen quite an amount of customer projects where they wanted to have some objects flash or blink and they did it using visibility. You can do that, of course, with repetitive scripts or you can control it via can, but this is a much easier way to do this and it uses less resources. So first of all, you set a flashing cycle, which means the time by which the object will flash. The minimum is 100 milliseconds, the maximum is 5 seconds for a very slow flash. And 100 is quite a quick blink, I would say. 
After that, you activate the property flashing, so you set it to true. And then the object in question will start blinking until you set this property to false again. So very, very easy and might come in handy. The next thing is something that I already talked about in one of the last videos from last year or maybe even two years ago, but I still want to mention it again because things can be missed, things can be forgotten. The first thing, as I still have the default layout here, my personal tip to you, get rid of the satellite and the navigator windows and move the undo redo tab down here. If you have it like this, that half of the project tree is marked with the orange border here, then you can let go and it will put the undo redo frame here. You can of course change the sizes here depending on how big your project is and how much you want to see. And now you have still full access to your project tree and you have a very quick overview of the last steps that you did in your project with the possibility to undo them as needed. And since I'm here, remember that you can ignore single steps of the undo. So let's say I'm using this button and I put it here and now I'm putting that one here. And I want to undo this, but not this. I will ignore and go back. This one stays, this one goes back. There are more tabs here on the side. I'm sure most of you have noticed, but maybe you haven't. Here, the one in the bottom is the symbol library. We have two free icon libraries that you are free to use in your projects, quite large. And please remember that you can change the color here. If you don't want to use them in black, you can use them in green or any color that you like. You can even change that color after you, you scroll it. They are vector graphics, so put them in any resolution, any size you want. They will always be crisp and clear. There is another library called ISO 7000. These are a collection of ISO 7000 symbols. These will cost something. Please contact us or your, your vendor if you're interested in that. Once you purchase them, you are free to use them as well. Oh, and you can drag and drop from this library to any object. So if you want to have this as a background for your button, you can put it as the background image. The other tab here is the image library. Here you can add your image resource folders or even of course project folders to have very quickly all the images that you want to use in your project in one glance. I will add the project folder of the welcome project and here you can see all the images that are or were used in that project. And if I want to use it again, oh yes, I want to use that animated GIF file here. Just drag and drop. I can put it in the background for frames and, and buttons or I can just add it as a picture graphic. Speaking of dragging and dropping, drag and drop is a very big thing in the projector. You can drag and drop a lot of things to a lot of places. First of all, scripts. You can put objects into scripts. It will offer you certain commands that you want to execute, get property, set property, move them or set focus to them. And it will pre-fill the ID of that command line. You can, very new in the projector 2022, you can use the image pool to reuse objects that you have. You can drag and drop from here as well and use any image in the usual way. Also, you can drag and drop JavaScript files. You can drag them to objects that have events. Here you can see it offers all the events of that button. You can drop them on pages, which offers you the page event. And as you already have seen, you can even access the project itself and put JavaScript on the events of the project itself. You can drag and drop variables. You can drag them onto objects, use them as a variable reference or as a visibility variable. You can drag and drop them into scripts. It offers just to insert the variable name or fill the get and set variable value functions already with the variable name in question. The last little thing, I don't know if you have noticed, but when you look at the order of the pages in the welcome project, I have ordered these pages in the order that I wanted them. 
And you, of course, can do that as well. Not something that is in the UI, but you select a page and you press Alt and then page up or page down. Please watch the power modes page in the project tree. You can see that you can move it freely in the list of pages. A little secret, it might be that in a future version, we will have the possibility to group these pages as well. So then you will be able to sort them even better. But for now, this will have to do. And for now, this is my tips and tricks video. Let me know if you've got some other tricks, share them with everyone, share them with us. And as always, happy projecting. See you in the next video.